Hi everybody, welcome to uh, another service. We just want to thank you for watching us and uh, get your communion ready, get your Bibles ready and, and just listen what the Lord wants to tell you. Listen with your heart and uh, it's so exciting when you open the word of the Lord and you can start hearing it because that's the way he speaks to us through his word because other people already went through difficult times, prosperous times, sad times exciting times in the Bible so that we can learn something out of it. So that's one of the ways which we can hear the Lord's voice and then um, yeah once again just thank you for, for watching and uh, please enjoy it and um, uh, give feedback if you've got anything testimonies that you want to want to um, share with us. So um, yeah I just had a word of knowledge for, for a painful shoulder Somebody's got a painful shoulder and the pain is so severe, it's on your left hand. It's, uh, it's so severe, it goes right through your whole arm and into your hand. It's um, a word of knowledge is where the Lord gives you something in uh, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 8. It's where the Lord spiritually he gives you gives you word of knowledge where, where He wants to do something, where He wants to heal somebody or He wants to say something to somebody. So. If you, if you feel that's you for that painful shoulder, just put your hand on your shoulder and we, we'll pray for that shoulder. Uh, uh, so just just put your hand there. Yes, it, it's it's you. Um, if you got that painful shoulder, just put your hand on it and we'll pray for that. And so let's pray together. Father, I thank you for that shoulder that you heal them, Father, now in the name of Jesus. Father, you gave us authority. You bring this world into creation with your words, Father. You said, let there be light, and there was light. Father, so we, we're going to take that same uh, authority that you gave us through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that filled us, Father. We just take that authority and we speak to the pain in that shoulder in the name of Jesus. Pain, I command you to let him go. Let him go in the name of Jesus. Let him go now in the name of Jesus. We command a healing over that body, whatever else is wrong father we thank you that that will also be healed in the name of jesus thank you father minister to them now minister to them minister to them father in the name of jesus amen so we thank you for watching enjoy it uh, we also have feedback on our building project um, so enjoy that and um, guys just again listen with your heart and uh, let's take the limit of God. It's exciting, man. Every time if you open the word, you get something new. So, uh, Joella will be bringing us part two of uh, following Jesus on purpose. Enjoy, guys. for us. 
above every other name. Hi, and welcome to Kids Church Online. We're Jess and Luke. Hello. Today we're going to talk about soap. Oh, soap. Just like this one. No, Jessica, not oh. that sort of soap. Not that one. The sort of soap that helps us get the most out of reading the Bible. Uh -huh. Yeah. S is for scripture, mm -hmm. O is for observation, mm -hmm. A is for application, how we can apply it to our lives, and P is for prayer. Let's see. Yeah, so today's scripture we, is going to be taken from Daniel chapter 3. So if you've got your Bibles at home, now's a good time to grab it and open it up to the book of Daniel and find chapter 3 and you can read along with us. A long time ago there lived three young Jewish men. Their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They lived in Babylon, which was ruled by King Nebuchadnezzar. He was a proud and arrogant king. One day he decided to build a great big gold statue of himself, and he commanded everyone in the whole country to bow down to it every time the music played. But Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they refused to bow down to it. This made King Nebuchadnezzar very angry. But he liked Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, so he gave them a second chance. He said, I will give you one more chance to bow down to my statue. But if you don't, you will be thrown into the fiery furnace. But Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego still refused to bow down. They said, 
If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you've set up. Well, King Nebuchadnezzar was absolutely furious. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than normal. He got his little soldiers to throw Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego into the fire. It was so hot that the soldiers burned up in a puff of smoke. Suddenly, King Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in an amazement. Didn't we throw three men into the fire? I see four men walking around in the flames unharmed, and the fourth looks like a god. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, come out, he called. So they came out, and King Nebuchadnezzar saw that not a hair on their heads was singed, and they didn't even smell like smoke. King Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They were willing to die rather than serve or worship any other God except their own God. There is no other God like this. And King Nebuchadnezzar promoted Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego to even higher positions than before. So what did you think of that story? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, back to our soap. We've done our scripture, we've done our observation. We have, yeah. Now we're up to the third letter, which is? A for application. A for application. So how can we apply this story to our life? Well, I think we can have faith, like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Mm. They had a tremendous faith. Huge. Faith that took them to even the point of be willing to go into that fiery furnace because they trusted in the Lord our God. Yeah. And they said, even if our God doesn't come through, we will still never bow down to your That's idols. Right. That's amazing. That's the faith we need to have. Exactly. So next time you're facing something scary or you need to stand up for what you believe in, think of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Yeah. And know that you too can have that kind of faith. And even if God doesn't come through, it's going to be okay in the end. Yeah. Just like the fiery furnace. That's it. So I think we've got to finish off with our P, prayer. So take it away, Luke. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for always being there for us. And Lord, I just pray that you give us the faith and the courage to stand up for you and what is right, just like you gave Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. You're amazing, Lord. Give us that strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you guys next time. See ya. I don't know if you, well, I have to assume that you know that today is the day of Pentecost, the 31st of May, 2020, the day of Pentecost. What a fantastic morning to be able to enjoy communion together. Now, uh, I don't know if you are all that aware of the roots of the significance of the day of Pentecost, and it goes way back to the book of Genesis. Of course, everything goes back to Genesis, uh, the Tower of Babel. What happened there was uh, all the people who were on the earth at that time, the children of Noah, they wouldn't disperse and cover the earth. They stayed in a place called the, the uh, Plain of China and they built themselves a tower. And it was, uh, they opposed what God wanted them to do. The thing is, God came down, saw what they were doing, and he actually said, if we don't do something, anything that they put their mind to, their heart to, they'll be able to achieve. So what happened there was God scattered them throughout the whole world and changed their language. They couldn't speak the same language. Each nation was given its own language. But that's, that's what's happened on the surface. If you were to read uh, Deuteronomy 4, if you were to read Psalm 82, I'll read, actually I will, I would like to be able to quote them but I can't that God Most High gave land to every nation. 
he assigned a guardian angel to each of them. But the Lord himself takes care of Israel. So what happened there was all the nations as we know them today have a guardian angel over them. Guardian angel sounds like a lovely thing, doesn't it? There's a, a term, I don't know if you've ever heard it, it's called absolute power corrupts absolutely. And that's actually not for people. These angels have become corrupt. They are fallen. They are a major reason for the result of the way that the world is today. But what happened on the day of Pentecost was that was reversed. Just to give you a bit more background about these dudes, I want to read to you Psalm 82. This is the Good News translation. God presides in the assembly council. So he's called a meeting with these angels. In the assembly of the gods, he gives his decision. He's talking to these guardian angels. You must stop judging unjustly. You must no longer be partial to the wicked. Defend the rights of the poor and the orphans. Be fair to the needy and the helpless. Rescue them from the power of evil people. How ignorant you are, how stupid. You are completely corrupt and justice has disappeared from the world. You are gods. I said all of you are children of the Most High, but you will die like mortals. Your life will end like that of any prince. Come, O God, and rule the world. The nations are yours. The psalmist is crying out for God to come and put things right. Jesus did exactly that. That's why we're taking communion. He put things right. And on the day of Pentecost, he allowed his spirit, the Holy Spirit, to come. They spoke in tongues. They spoke in specific languages. All the languages of all the nations were heard that day. Grab your Bible, pull out uh, the book of Acts, chapter 2. Read all about it. The problem, the situation was reversed. So what happens today is come to the Lord, live for him, do the things that he wants. See, those people could have had God as their, as, as their guardian angel, but they didn't. They built a tower. They tried to make a name for themselves. They didn't do what God asked them to do. And they were dispersed. But today, if you come to the Lord and you do what he wants you to do, like in the day of Pentecost, they were there waiting on the Lord and he came and he blessed them and they spoke in those tongues. They sent a message to those guardian angels by declaring the goodness and the praises of God in their languages not the language that they knew they were all from Galilee they spoke in all the languages of all the nations and they reversed it that is the power of the day of Pentecost today we give you notice fallen angels those of us who choose to live for the Lord Jesus we will create a new kingdom a kingdom of love a kingdom of forgiveness a kingdom of looking out for the poor, a kingdom of, of being people whom the God, Lord Almighty wants. So if, if that feels like something that you want to be a part of, please take your communion. He gave the ultimate sacrifice as we know, so that the day of Pentecost could come. He told, he, he told his disciples, his mother, he told those folk, wait in Jerusalem for the day of Pentecost, for the fullness of the Holy Spirit. We are living in those times, in those days. We don't need to come under those false gods. We can come under the God Most High. Please take off the bread. Take your cup. The blood of the Lord Jesus that cleanses us from sin, that allows us to live free and pure lives. Go forth, be pure, live for the Lord, and allow His kingdom rule to reign in your life, and allow His influence to spread throughout the whole world because the nations are now his again. I'm David Crawford. I just want to share with you about giving. You know, it's a real 
blessing to give back to God because he's given so much to us, hasn't he? He gave his only begotten son to us so that we might have eternal life. And in Malachi 3.10, I just want to read a few scriptures to you. It says, bring all your tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now. Therefore, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up for you the windows of heaven and pour out you at a blessing that there, may no, there shall be no room enough to receive it. You know, God wants to bless us. And we think, oh, what a grudge to give to God. But you know, I found in my own life, you know, I've been sometimes often really scratching and got bills and things to pay. The Lord said, give me back what belongs to me. And you know, when I've done that, God has always blessed me. He's always brought in more finance. He's always given me good health. I'm not a young man anymore. <laughs> um, and I'm still doing odd jobs around the place. And I praise God for his provision, for finance, and his pr provision for health when I obey him and do what he wants me to do. And he can do it to you to, for you too. If you stretch out and give back to God what belongs to God. Now, um, on you'll soon see some details of our bank details for River at Central Church. And um, you can um, pay um, through, your, through your bank to our church. But otherwise, um, I believe that you can come to the church on Mondays and um, there'll be someone there that will receive your money. God bless you. Stretch out and give to God and he'll bless you. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the building. Of course, the building is not the church. You are the church. Wherever you are this morning, you, me, we together are the church. This is just the building. But what a great gift of God it is to us. And we're so grateful for the incredible way that God has provided it for us. Some of the COVID restrictions have eased in the last little while and it looks like they might ease some further in June. But at this stage, we still aren't able to meet all together in the building on a Sunday morning. There's just too many of us for the space. There's too many of us to be allowed to meet together. However, there's still been plenty going on here, plenty going on to prepare the building for the next stages of what God's got for us here. There is progress. One of the things that we've been working on is some plans for the outside of the building, some signage, uh, some some uh, pictures along the front, so a new colour scheme, a decking area even, and some wood panelling along the front. This is just the architect's, uh, architect's idea about how it might look at the concept and we're continuing to talk back with the forwards about changing some of the details and developing it, but just wanted to show you a sneak peek of what's going on. Also, later in June, we'll be doing a working bee to plant up the garden. You'll see this little strip of garden bed along the edge of the car park and uh, we'll have opportunity to get together uh, up to 10 of us at a time or up to 20 it might be by then to uh, work on that and, and make that look really great. We want to continue to give a message of hope to the community around us, a message that things are not always going to be like they are right now, a message that we believe in the future of this area, we believe in the future of the Riverland and we believe in the future of Jesus Church, our church, here in this place. You may have wondered, why have we bought a building? We can't even use it. Do you know we're better off right now than if we were still paying rent for a building that we weren't using? God is good and his timing is absolutely perfect. The other thing to remember is that God has a plan for us and it's not just for this year, it's for the years, in fact, the generations to come. And I just think God's timing with this is actually incredible so that we're, we've got the building, we're not paying the exorbitant rent and we have time to plan and to do what needs to be done to make it ready the next stage. Well, continue to sow in, continue to pray, continue to pray for this region, continue to pray for how God will use this building in the year to come. Well, good morning everybody, I'm Joella and welcome to our kitchen. This morning we're going to open the word together here in the kitchen. 
Today we're continuing our series on following Jesus on purpose. You know, if there was ever a time when you could follow Jesus by just swimming with the crowd, just, you know, going along with everybody else, that time is well and truly past. Let me read to you the scripture that informs our series. It comes from Matthew 16 and it's from verse 24. It says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any one of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Last week, Dave talked about life transformation groups, their LTGs, the groups, small groups we have in our church that are designed to make disciples of us. They're a small group of between two and three people that meet weekly for about an hour and there are three things that you do when you're in that group. You answer some character conversation questions which go into all the different areas of your character and give you an opportunity to confess what needs to be confessed. You pray for people who don't yet follow Jesus, who desperately need Jesus in their life. And you read through the week large portions of scripture and then when you get together you talk about them, you ask each other what you've learned from those passages of scripture. So there's a risk when we read the Bible that we can just wash past it without actually allowing it to wash us. So today I want to teach you to use soap to dig deeper into the Bible. Whether you've been reading the Bible for years or whether you've just begun or you're about to begin, SOAP is a Bible study tool that will help you to dig deeper into the Word of God. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, Timothy writes to the church, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realise what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip people to do every good work. Today, I'm going to teach you to make soap. Here's some I've made previously and to use soap. Let me explain. At the moment of salvation, at the moment when you decide to follow Jesus, there's this incredible miracle that happens. It's a miracle of, of salvation, it's a miracle of cleansing, it's a miracle you're washed with the blood, the sacrifice of Jesus, and you become, in God's eyes, holy and righteous and pure and perfect. And yet on the outside, our behaviours and our way we speak and the things we, we say, uh, they still need to be changed. And so as we read the Word of God, it's one of the things that washes us clean or helps us to make the outside of us, the um, behaviours and things we say and do, match up with our internal state, which is that we're righteous and pure and perfect. Let me read to you from James chapter 1. You know, James uh, chapter 1, verses, uh, verse 22, we're going to start at. When we read the Bible, it won't change our lives unless we actually do what it says. You know, if you, if you look at soap in the soap dish and you just, you just admire it, isn't it, isn't it beautiful, isn't it pretty, and it, yes, it smells good, and you, uh, well, you know, you can taste it, but, but that doesn't change you. It doesn't make you clean unless you actually apply it to your body. The same with the Word of God. Listen to this. But don't just listen to God's Word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the Word and don't obey it, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. You might be wondering what all this soap bit is about. Well, soap is an acrostic, a way of doing a Bible study. So grab a piece of paper now or uh, grab your note-taking app and write the letters that spell soap down the side of the, the page. S-O-A-P. So when, we, when I literally make soap, it also has these four parts to it. We're going to start with S. And the very first part when you make soap is a thing called caustic soda. Now, this is a bad boy. This is powerful stuff. 
I've already measured it out here. It's so strong and so powerful that I need to use safety goggles and gloves to be able to handle it. It's a bit like the Word of God, really, because in Hebrews 4, the Word of God tells us the Word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. So I start with my caustic soda. And what you need to do as you do this soap study is start with your scripture. So what the scripture we're going to use today is the one I just read from James chapter 1. So write that on your page, James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25. Now you really want to look at this and read it maybe two or three times. Maybe you want to write it out. I always find that really helpful to write it out in my journal, the scripture that I'm going to study. So how do you choose this scripture? Well, you might be reading a larger portion and you wait for the Holy Spirit just to sort of bring something to life for you that you notice and you go, oh, what's this? I want to have a closer look at this. So that's your scripture. Take this moment now to just pause, pause the, the, the uh, video and write out the scripture or read it two or three times over out loud in a big voice in a little voice uh, just read it out and then we'll be back the second letter in your acrostic is o and in my case that's olive oil for my soap making it's locally grown riverland uh, oil beautiful stuff but in your bible study it stands for observation and this is where you notice anything that you observe about the passage. Who's speaking? Who's it being written to? What's going on in the situation? Why are they, why is that conversation happening? Who's speaking? You know, all of these kinds of questions. What's going on in the story? So you might like to pause this presentation now and just write down some of the things you observe. Some of the things I've observed are things like that it's James writing to believers, that it's possible to fool yourself. We don't always tell ourselves the truth, that there's perfect law that sets us free. Well, that's the law of Christ, the, the law of the gospel. And this a bit in the last couple of um, words about obedience, obeying, doing what it says and remembering that brings God's blessing. Which brings us then to the third letter in our acrostic, the A. Well, I have to get creative here. So this is A jug of water, or water, if you like. But water is the third ingredient in my soap. But for your Bible study, the third ingredient is A for apply. This is where you look at the passage that you've just observed and you think, well, how could I apply this to my life? Is there something I can do? Is there something I need to say? Is there an action I need to plan to do? Is there a habit I need to change? Is there somebody I need to talk to? Is, is there some change in my belief structure that I need to bring about? What is the application? And this is where it goes from just being head knowledge, just being education, to being something that rolls out into your life that is actual wisdom where it becomes something that changes how you live. One of my applications from this study is to take the part where it talks about remember what you've heard. So about memorising that verse. I've written it on a yellow sticky note and put it in the back of my phone cover to carry around with me so I remember to learn it. Well, I've added the first three ingredients and now I need the fourth ingredient, which is power. So I need power and I need then to begin to trust in the process. So for your Bible study, you need power and that power comes from the Holy Spirit and you get it through prayer. And so that's the fourth step of your Bible study. You read the scripture, you make some observations, you figure out how you would apply it to your life. And that's not just a, an application that is a theory, you know, I could do this. It needs to be something that you're actually going to do, a plan you can put in place. And then the last thing is you pray and you ask God, please help me to understand this word properly. Help me to apply it to my life properly. Help me to make the change to my life that you would have me make. And in this case, with the soap making, I'm going to add some power and see what happens. In just a couple of minutes, I've taken oil, caustic soda and water 
and something incredible has happened. It's turned into this golden, very hot, um, liquidy stuff that I've poured into these molds. Do you know that's going to take six weeks because until it looks like this, until it can be used as soap. It's called the saponification process. You know, as you begin to use this model of Bible study called soap, there will be a process that takes place. It won't just automatically change you overnight, but a process will happen over the next months and years, and it's called the sanctification process, the process of you becoming more and more like Jesus. So this morning we've learned about how to make soap, and we've learned about how to use the soap Bible study tool. It's all about scripture, observation, application, and prayer. I hope you found that useful. Now, what, what from here? Well, if you're part of a life transformation group, then I would recommend that at least once a week, you make sure that you grab one of the scriptures that you're reading and really dig down into it with a study like this. That way, when you go to your life transformation group and you get to question 10, which is, have you finished your reading? What are you gonna do about it? It becomes easy. You've got an application, an action step that you've already chosen, you've already decided upon, and you can just say, well, this is what I'm going to do, and then they can help you remember to do that thing. If you're not in a life transformation group, then go back and watch last week's presentation again, as David explains all about them and how you can join and become part of one of those groups. It certainly is the most surefire way I know for people who are desperate for Jesus to become more like him. Regardless, I encourage you, when you're reading the Bible, grab it, read a chunk, let the Holy Spirit highlight something for you and then dig into it with a soap study. Write out the scripture, read it over and over and over. What do you observe? How are you going to apply it? And then pray that the Holy Spirit will come and help you make that change in your life. You know, if you think that uh, that's something that you could do with others. It would be great to do soap studies with other people. Maybe you could get together in person. Maybe you could get together over one of the video conferencing tools and do a soap study together. If you feel like you could do with some more help, somebody to walk you through that process, then please comment below this morning's service link or get in contact with us in some other way. We'd love to join you to do a soap study to help you walk through the process and then of course you can walk through the process with others. But now let me pray for you before we close. Father God, I thank you that you have not hidden yourself away where we have to come looking for you and you haven't given us anywhere to start. You haven't given us any clues or any tips, but instead you've, you've given us the word of God, your word, like your autobiography, which tells us, reveals to us who you are and what you want for us, what you want of us and, and how much you love us and what you've done for us. So God, I pray now for all those who are participating in this presentation this morning, Lord, that they would be able to grab your word open it and that you by your spirit would speak to us through it, would highlight those passages and that as people dedicate themselves to this process of, of obeying, applying your word to their lives, then Lord, we will see that process of change, that process of sanctification as we become more and more like you, as we become disciples who are intentional in following you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I pray your blessing on each of these people and I ask that as they have their first goes at doing this soap study or maybe revive it if it's an old skill, then Lord, well, I pray that you would meet them in that place and help them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, we've come to the end of today's presentation. It's been great having you with us, uh, but now we're going to head off in our separate ways. There will be Zoom groups this morning, so if you want to pop in and say good day to somebody like we normally would when we meet in the building together, then please do that. Go back to the Facebook page and there'll be the links up there for how you can join the Zoom groups. If you want some more help or you've got questions or there's anything that we can do to support you in your journey in following Jesus, then please get in contact with us. We love to hear from you. We're never too busy to hear from people who are eager to follow Jesus. Feel free to use your phone. Get it out and ring somebody who's part of your family, part of the church, and uh, say good day, greet them on this wonderful day, and uh, tell them about soap. 
tell them about making soap, tell them about using soap, remind them to wash their hands, and God bless you. Have a wonderful week.